Hi guys, this is Ness of Locomobiles.com and today I'm going to show you the basics of Swift Combine. Uh, before we get started, um, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel uh, by clicking the subscribe button and also don't forget to click the uh, notification bell icon so that you'll receive updates on the videos that I upload. On this channel, I upload videos about mobile development, tips, and best practices. Okay, let's get started. Right now in front of me, we have an Xcode project, and this uh, project demonstrates the use of Swift Combine. Uh, in this, this app, which I have in the simulator, uh, we have three versions of the view controller. One is traditional, second is combined, where we demonstrate the use of Swift Combine, and then a refactored version. The application, uh, it's just going to display an incremented uh, integer value. So we have a button and then we have a label. If I press the increment, it just adds one, and then adds one to the current value. So every time I press the button, the state would change. Okay, let's head over to the Xcode project and see how it was uh, written. So currently we're looking at the uh, a simpler code. I would call it the traditional way of doing this. Well, for now, the application is very simple. That's why you only see a few uh, lines of code. So in this code, we have our variable, which is the uh, current that stores the current state, and it's an integer. And then we have a reference to the UI label, which is label. And we also have IB action, which is going to execute this code. What it does, it um, we have the current variable, and then we increment it by one as you have seen in the demonstration earlier on the simulator. So the new value is being converted into a string and then passed to the property of the UI label. That's how you are seeing the new values on or displayed on the screen. So whenever I tap the increment button, the value changes where it is added with another value. Okay. How about if we are going to introduce Swift Combine, how is it going to look? Okay, let's head over to the next view controller. Before we talk about the code, let me just talk about a few things about Swift Combine. So Swift Combine is a new framework that was introduced uh, last year and you'll need at least uh, Xcode 11. Uh, before you Xcode 11 or iOS 13 to work with Swift Combine. And there are a few concepts that you need to be familiar with. One is publisher, second is subscriber, the third is operator, and also subject. Publisher are objects that, or types that declare um, or declares a type that delivers a sequence of values over time. So these are publishing data. Subscribers are the ones that will act on the data, the ones that will uh, have something to do with re the receiving of the data. The operator are special kind of methods that are, you know, they have specific tasks, uh, which I will also demonstrate on this example. Okay, going back to um, the view controller, just like before, we have the current value, we have the UI label, and then we also have uh, declared a new variable, which is a pass-through subject. Earlier, I have mentioned publisher subscriber and then operator and the other one that i'm going to talk about is another concept uh, or protocol which is called subject so subject is a protocol where it has a method method called send 
So it allows you to send value or inject a value into a stream of values. Um, you, you can create your own publisher if you like, but most of the time you wouldn't need to do that because in Combine, there are types where you could use instead of uh, creating a publisher. So you could use these types as a publisher and then you could use them in your application and I think, you know, you wouldn't need to create a publisher on your own unless you really need to, you know, create your own publisher for a specific purpose. Uh, the one that are available, the ones that are available to us is the pass-through subjects and the current value subject. Pass-through subject, just uh, subscribers would receive all the values uh, in that stream. The current value subject, the subscriber would receive the values by from the time that they subscribe to this publisher. So, um, as I mentioned earlier, pass-through subject and current value subject is a special kind of publisher. And we'll move on to the next step or the next method, which is bind. The bind method in this code is just binding the publisher with the subscriber. And in the bind method, we have a uh, an operator which is map. So in this demonstration, we have uh, used map. It's one of those many methods that are available. Um, and the purpose of map, it allows you to receive the incoming value from the stream and then it allows you to return a different type. So in, in this case, we have our current value as an integer, but since we want to display it in a UI label and UI label expects a string, a string type, then the map gives us the opportunity to convert an integer into a string. So you can see here, I converted converted the value into a string and then return it as a string value. Doing this will return um, another publisher. Typically, if you have an operator, um, it will also return a publisher. There are cases it will turn some other uh, types for you. So in this case, we will be using this new publisher um, and then we will have a subscriber subscribe to this publisher. So in this example, I have used the assign subscriber. There are two types of uh, subscribers that are available, the assign and the sync. The sync allows you to receive the values and then uh, typically you would use it for debugging uh, or other purposes, but specifically or uh, normally you would use it for debugging. So let me show you how sync would uh, how sync looks like. So I just type the uh, the publisher object and then type sync. So we have uh, two two versions of the sync method. One is to receive value and then the other one, it has the receive completion block and then the receive value block. Uh, I'm going to use the first one. And you would expect to receive a string. So that's the in value, which is a string. And then here, you can do whatever you want. And then of course, uh, the sync returns a certain type. And then if you want to jump to the definition, you can see what the return type is. So it returns any cancelable. Sync and assign returns an any cancelable uh, object. An any cancelable object is an object that you can reference to where you can call the cancel method. What it does, it, it stops or unsubscribes or remove the, uh, remove uh, the object from subscription or your subscribe, su subscriber from the subscription. So you would call the cancel. 
Otherwise, um, you assign the instance of a cancelable to a set. So in this ex in this uh, example, I've assigned it to the cancelables set. Uh, you would be able to conveniently assign it to the set using the store method. So I have the store method and then and then reference the cancelables uh, variable. So in this example, uh, the buy method is set up when view did load is called. And then as soon as the application or the view controller controller has loaded, then we can start testing the app. And then if we tap on the increment, we can see that the label updates with a new state, which is the uh, incremented value. And if we look at the IB action, as I mentioned earlier, that the our publisher, which is the pass-through subject, is also a subject. So a subject has the send method, which allows us to send a value. In this case, our publisher um, is able to send the new uh, value into the stream, which eventually is received by uh, our operator and also our subscriber. Um, for now, the, the code doesn't uh, look great and there's a lot of boilerplate and we want to simplify this code a bit. So we move on to the next view controller. I have created the counter class wherein it has uh, a couple of properties. And you're familiar with the current property that uh, stores the current state and then also um, it's being used to transform the integer value into a string. And we have a new property that I have introduced which is value. Value is a string. And then if you're if you're curious, um, you will notice uh, publish, and you're curious what is publish for. Publish is a property wrapper, and you use published if you want this uh, property to also have a publisher. So behind the scenes, if you use the published property wrapper, you will be able to access or create create a publisher and then access it access it at a later time. So you simply create this property um, with a type that you are going to use or <clears throat> provide. So in this case, it's a string. So you use it, uh, you normally would assign a value. Typically, you would need to initialize it uh, through an initializer or in this case I initialize it with a value and then uh, you can assign the new value in this uh, in this case it's in the increment method okay so that's our counter class that's how we extracted some of the uh, combined related features and also the counter functionality and going back to our view controller, what we did is we just created an instance of the counter. And then we also have the cancelable set where we store the any cancelable from our operators. And uh, we also have the bind, uh, the bind method where we bind a subscriber to the publisher. As I've mentioned earlier, Behind the scenes, if we are using publish, the publish property wrapper, it will create a publisher. And to access the publisher of this uh, property, you would just need to use the dollar sign in front of the property. Then this property now becomes uh, a publisher or be a reference to that uh, publisher object and then like in the example before you can now assign a subscriber to this publisher so I have referenced the counter method or counter object and then the value but since I use the dollar sign I now have access to the 
to the publisher. And of course, uh, this has been assigned to the label or uh, the label's text property. And of course, stored be any cancelable to the cancelable set. Assigning it to the cancelable set is sort of um, a memory management uh, work. All right, so if we are going to try this application it will work the same as the previous examples let's do a quick recap earlier i talked about publishers operators and subscribers you just need to get familiar with these three concepts to get started with swift combine and you'll be able to apply swift combine or use it in your own projects i hope i was able to help you with understanding how swift combine works please support my channel by subscribing and sharing this video to your friends